From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lao Wanji Rasuradit. As of the year 2020, over half of the global population are living in cities. The United Nations has expected the proportion of urban population to rise to 68% in 30 years or in 2050. In the face of such a trend, which has put large pressure on urban areas, governments around the world have turned to technology and digital innovation to deal with demand and problems created by urbanization, as well as to better manage their limited resources. This thus gives rise to the concept of smart cities. Smart cities refer to certain parts of the city that apply digital innovation to make their communities more livable and to achieve sustainability, rather than being implemented covering an entire city. Most smart city projects around the world are specifically designed for a certain district, neighborhood, campus, or even a building. It is worth noting that the way smart city projects supply technology varies from one city to another due to the difference in their goals, organizations, and citizens. Despite their differences, the Internet of Things and 5G are among the crucial technology that any cities will have to utilize in their process of becoming more intelligent. Internet of Things is a system whereby devices, objects, and people are connected to each other for communication and decision-making, whereas 5G is a fifth-generation mobile network which enables the Internet of Things system and enhances its connectivity speed. One instance is mobile applications that provide real-time updates on public transportation. The uses of these applications can be spotted in many big cities and metropolis. Not only do these applications show arrival times and available seats of public transports, but they also notify users of delays and service disruptions. This sends able commuters to plan their trips more conveniently. In Thailand, The concept of smart cities was first introduced in 2003, but smart city projects were not viewed as a driving force for national development until 2017, when the government adopted the Thailand 4.0 policy, the 20-year national strategies, and the 12th National Economic and Social Development Plan. These policies aim to drive Thailand towards national security prosperity and sustainability. Both the Thailand 4.0 policies and the 20-year national strategy will be effective until 2037, whereas the 12th National Economic and Social Development Plan is set to terminate in 2021. Each National Economic and Social Development Plan covers a period of five years. The government is working on drafting the 13th plan. According to the Digital Economy Promotion Agency, which is the government agency responsible for promoting the smart city market in Thailand, there have been five approved smart cities in Thailand so far. Another 41 smart city proposals are still in the process of consideration. The five smart cities projects already approved cover different provinces across Thailand. They are Bangkok, the capital, Phuket in the south, Konkat in the northeast, Rayong on the eastern coast, and Lampang in the north. In view of the number of smart city proposals in Thailand, the enthusiasm to meet the needs of citizens and solve problems in urban areas could be clearly seen. However, the country still has a long way to go. The 2020 Smart City Index, published by Singapore University for Technology and Design, and the Institute for Management Development, which is an independent academic institution found in Switzerland, noted that Bangkok is still struggling with air pollution, road congestion, corruption, security, public transport, waste management, and an increasing demand for electricity. 
Bangkok was ranked 71 out of 109 cities in the 2020 survey, while Singapore was the number one smart city. The survey seeks to evaluate citizens' thought about problems with structures and technologies application in cities around the world. To help us better understand the overall landscape of smart cities in Thailand and the country's progress in its smart city scheme, Unlock the Science reporter Ha Wang Mengs talked to Dr. Pasagon Bretombut, Executive Vice President of the Digital Economy Promotion Agency, which is the government agency in charge of promoting the development of smart cities in Thailand. Kun Pasagon, after smart city was viewed as an important strategy for future national development in 2060, how do you evaluate the overall performance of Thailand in developing smart cities so far? Uh, yes, uh, we start from 2016 in Phuket. Uh, that, that one is our pilot project. So we try out on, on the, some steady uh, application on the CCTV. Uh, we provide some uh, AI on that and we collaborate with the governance in Phuket because it's, uh, you know that the size of Phuket is about Singapore. So basically we want to, to compare between Phuket and Singapore. And, and at that time, uh, it's quite new for, for us, for our smart city, but uh, it's less of the awareness to the countries. Uh, smart city, uh, if, if we classify it into uh, three steps, the, the first step may be the awareness and do the planning. So, so far we have passed that step and we do a lot of uh, planning, good planning. And today is a step for the implementation. And, and that wise we, uh, request a lot of uh, solution provider from the private sector, even the startup, yeah, to join the smart city because it's uh, their market too. So, and, and the, next, the last step will be about the that you are to become the smart city and you have to do the evaluation. And, and not only the government that, that uh, take low in the smart city today, uh, there are more than 20 companies uh, that that is not a technology company, but it's a city development company. It's a company uh, estimated by the, uh, the citizen on that, in the cities. They, they form themselves to become the, the smart city company. Uh, they, they don't want to wait for, for the government. Uh, that they, they, they try, uh, because it's a win-win. If they, I mean, create some uh, solution for their own, their, their own towns, it's a benefit to, to them. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, direction that uh, not only government, but private sector also understand and less their uh, awareness or the smart city. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused devastating impacts to the Thai economy. To what extent will this affect the national progress on smart cities? I think that it affects in a negative and positive way in, in a negative way, uh, we, we, we heard that we locked down and, and the, the economy shut down. So if you also this term about the investment, uh, but in the positive way, we realized that the infrastructure is the, the must that we have to improve, like a digital infrastructure. People have to work from home. The student had to learn from home. So do we have enough the fiber optic or the bandwidth for the student to work from home or telemedicine? So this kind of the technology that, that you have to come back and, I mean, you are with ourselves. But anyway, uh, because of the situations, uh, people have to, uh, it's the must that you have to use the mobile application, uh, like uh, in Thailand, that like uh, the uh, many programs from the government that you have to load the mobile application, you have to use more China for the tracings. Uh, more problem is for the vaccination record. So this kind of the uh, skill, the new skill, yeah, even at the elderly people, they have to learn the new skill. I think it's, it's, it's a good way that we jump start on the, the, the skill of digital technology. Uh, it, it helps the new normal for the smart city also. In your opinion, what is the biggest challenge that Thailand has to face while developing smart cities? Uh -huh. uh, the, the smart city is a multi-sectors. Uh, 
uh, it's not about the, only the, uh, the urban planning. You have to get involved in the energy, like electricity, in the late generators, involved in the, uh, uh, the garbage management, in the uh, public transport. So we have to look at the holistic view. Uh, the, the, the problem is the, the in Thailand, we sometimes we work as a silo. So the, the challenge is how to integrate uh, this, this sector together. And, and they, we need some leader, uh, mostly uh, like a governors or the, the leader of the cities yeah, that have the authorities to command or integrate this sector together. Another challenge is sustainability. So how to make it sustain uh, without using the like a physical year budget or the tech money. So today there are a lot of good business model from startup. So sometimes the startup may invest for the cities because they get the uh, return from like an advertisement. So we have to think about the, 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 the new uh, business model and it's it, it very challenging. I am aware that in October 2020, the United Kingdom, one of the world leaders in smart cities, and Thailand launched a partnership to develop smart cities. So considering the difference in people, needs, urban landscape, and challenges, how do you think the partnership between two or more countries can boost their progress in smart cities? Uh, basically, we share the use case or the experience and the knowledge on the smart city because in some part like an infrastructure or some normal pain point, normal problems, there are the, the, the common solutions. But we just maybe adopt the solution and just adapt in some part to meet our culture or our, our people. Can you please list one example, one specific example of the lesson that Thailand gets to learn from the partnership in developing smart cities? Uh, yes, recently we, we have the project uh, with, uh, with Japan in Phuket uh, to develop the CCTV analytics of the traffic. Uh, they show us how to use the CCTV or the camera to analyze uh, the, the traffic to detect the accident uh, and to classify the vehicle type is a motorcycle, is a van, is a car. So we can uh, yeah, do the planning, we can do uh, the, uh, the arrange of the, the traffic flow. We have to fit the physical of the state. So this kind of data is, is, is a need. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. Professor Dr. Bandit Uaapon, president of Chula Longkorn University, once said, I quote, if we can adjust to changes timely, or if we can act proactively before changes arrive, we will become future leaders. Therefore, Jolalongkorn University is implementing our Smart City project. He said this in a video clip introducing Samyan Smart City, which is a project solely invested by Jolalongkorn University. Samyan is the name of a well-known commercial and residential neighborhood located adjacent to the campus of Jolalongkorn University in Bangkok. The Samyan Smart City Project, which was approved by the government in May 2021 and is set to be completed in 2037, covers not only the Jolalongkorn University campus, but also its four surrounding commercial and residential areas. In its ambitious planning of this project, Jolalongkorn University has proposed a total of 42 solution schemes to deal with problems related to the environment, energy, economy, governance, mobility, people, and livelihood in the project areas. One of the already implemented solutions is the on-demand tuk-tuk sharing service known as MoveMe. The service operates on a mobile application that enables commuters to request an electronic tuk-tuk. Tuk-tuk is the name of well-known three-wheel passenger vehicles common on the streets in Bangkok. Drivers will pick up different passengers who commute to the same location or area. The service charges a very affordable fee. 
this chair ride reduced not only traffic, but since the car is electric, it caused no air pollution. Unlock the Science reporter Pa Wang Meng talks to Associate Professor Dr. Jitisak Thammapon Pilat from Department of Urban and Regional Planning, Faculty of Architecture, Jhulalongkorn University. Dr. Jitisak is also assistant to the president of Jhulalongkorn University for property and fiscal resources management, and hence is responsible for the Samyan Smart City project. Dr. Jitisak, what steps did Jhulalongkorn University take before officially proposing a, a list of diverse solutions for its Samyan Smart City project? Well, first of all, you have to know that Jhulalongkorn University is in the city center area. We are in the central business district. Every land plot in this area are very expensive. So the owner used every inch of the land to develop and make a maximum benefit, just like in every city center area all around the world. But at Samyan, it's different. In the past, Jhulalongkorn University has tried to concern about the better city life of our community. That's why we have a CU Centenary Park in the middle of the Samyai district for um, everyone can come and enjoy their everyday life after a long tired day. I can say that it is our first step to develop the Samyai Smart City because this is the way that we begin to create our area to be a place for a good community life. And we are also following our Green University policy which is one of the strategy that become a part of Samyang Smart City in terms of smart environment. All what we have done lead us to the next step that become a smart city concept nowadays. Which aspects of Samyang Smart City development have suffered greatly from the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, Uh, when you do anything, timing is the key factor, especially when you develop the project. And the project in our district is a construction project that costs a uh, big amount of the budget. So when COVID-19 pandemic come, it makes us waste the time. Many projects were delayed because we cannot keep on going on our construction schedule. Many workers in this, this construction sites are infected with COVID-19. So we have to clean the site and stop our construction process and reprocess, rethinking how to cash out with the time that we are preparing for the construction. This is the most suffer point for developing Samyang Smart City from the COVID-19 pandemic. Talking about construction, I'm aware that mm-hmm. the university is constructing block 28, block 33, mm-hmm. and block 34, uh, which are mm-hmm. two mixed-use areas and exhibition center. So, how do they relate to the concept of Samyang Smart City? I I need to say this: in our district, we have a master plan to be a guidelines or uh, the development framework to control our development project in the area. So every project. Must follow the master plan, not only block 28, block 33, or block 34, but I mean every project that were created in our area have to. So now Samyang is developed under the smart city master plan, so every project are all automatically under the smart city concept. For example, block 28 is the new development project in the medium scale. Built for the startup business concept, we try to create a new startup ecosystem in this project, which is different from the other. Such as we prepare the 24-hour flexible facility to support this project, but not only for their office, but also for the surrounding area and our community. On the rooftop of the building, um, we have a solar cell every building. To produce the electricity for the building, with the IT system provide for everyone uh, who who work in this building or just pass by like Brian. And about block twenty uh, thirty three, 
Rocktility is one of the residential mixed use projects which contain two towers of residential, one for the student and the other one for the staff and the community. And at Block 33, we also have another building which we can call the Future Exhibition Center. In this building, this exhibition center, we prepare the facility for the next generation activity, such as a living lab, a smart health facility, for example, it may be a dental clinic in this building with a technology that the dentist and the patient can manage their own appointment on the mobile phone. We also try to choose the tenants or retail who can fit to our building concept with their technology themes or activity. Or I can say that at least we can say Whoever will come, they need to have something new or something future. During the process of constructing Satyan Smart City projects, how do you assess mm -hmm. the level of awareness of the people in the community regarding these projects? And is there any resistance to the construction of smart cities? Okay, well, this is a difficult question for me. To create a city is not easy, right? To create a city that everyone understand what you are trying to do is more difficult i think when you build your own house you have uh, your idea you know exactly what you want or what your family needs but when you build a city it's not the same there's too many demand and too many objectives from different point of view especially when you are talking about a new concept like a smart city for the smart city actually is is a new concept, not only for this area. I can say that every city who try to use the smart city concept have the same problem <laughs> because they have to try to understand what exactly is the smart city. Smart city is not a technology city. It, it doesn't mean that you have your own mobile, you have your Wi-Fi, internet, and that's all is have many factors that, that you have to understand it and to make the community understand what you are trying to do. The most difficult part is how to make your community understand and accept what you are doing or trying to do. What will happen to their life in the future? Is it good or not? Is it worth to follow or not? How can we make them agree with it? So I think the most important thing that Samyang Smart City has to do is to show them and to make them secure that this concept can help the community to become a better life community. Not only for today, for their daily life, but also for the future and for their next generation in our district. I think this is a very important part of Smart City. Dr. Pascon of the Digital Economy Promotion Agency said that the Thai government started its pilot project on smart cities in 2016 in Phuket, which is the world's renowned island resource city in the south of Thailand. The project has launched an application linked with CCTVs in the city for the safety of the people there, which is a collaboration between the government and local private sector in Phuket. For the Samyan smart city, Dr. Jitisaka of the County of Architecture Jularongkorn University believes that more and more people living in the neighborhood can already notice the positive impacts brought about by the project. He mentioned the eco-friendly transport movement and the multifunctional Jularongkorn University Centenary Park as two prime examples. The park was built to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the university. Dr. Jitisak also believes that the Samyang Smart City project would enhance the urban lifestyle of future generations when the project is completed. Unlock the Science would like to thank Dr. Pasagon Pratombut, Executive Vice President of the Digital Economy Promotion Agency, and Associate Professor Dr. Jitisak Thammaporn Pilat from Department of Urban and Regional Planning, the County of Architecture, Jularongkorn University for sharing the concepts of smart city with us. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jula Radio Plus 
at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. And our program is also available as podcasts. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Dunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 